In this video, I'm going to discuss understanding degrees of freedom for variance and standard deviation. I'm going to show you graphically the idea of degrees of freedom. I'm going to show you a numerical example and look at the difference and the impact of the n minus 1 adjustment. I'm also going to discuss why we divide by n for the population variance and n minus 1 for the sample variance. So let's imagine you have a bell curve, a population, like that, with a mean in the middle, mu, the mean. And I take some sample, which is that blue line. And a sample is a subset of the population, and it has a mean of x bar. Since the sample mean and the population mean are not equal, there's some error rate, or some error between the two. As my sample gets larger, the error rate decreases, of course, or should decrease. If I only divide by n to get variance, there's no adjustment. But when I divide by n minus 1, there's an adjustment, and the bell curve gets spread out. And hopefully, the population mean is somewhere inside that bell curve, the adjusted bell curve. Now imagine I take the numerator of these two equations and I just say it's 240. Don't worry about how, it's just 240. And I'm going to take 240 divided by n, which is the sample size. And I'm going to take 240 divided by n minus 1. And I'll look at the difference and compare those results. I'm going to make a little table so we can keep track of, so I can keep track of the results. And across the top, I'm going to have 240 divided by n. And also 240 divided by n minus 1. So let's assume we have a small sample of only 4. So n is equal to 4. And again, that's my sample size. So I take 240 divided by 4. And this is equal to 60. And that would be my sample variance without n minus 1. Now if I do the same thing, but this time I take 240 divided by n minus 1. or 240 divided by 3, 4 minus 1 is 3, my sample variance would be 80. So the difference between these two is 20. So I got 60 without the n minus 1 and 80 with the n minus 1. So now let me increase the sample size to 6 and see what happens to these two calculations. 240 divided by 6 is 40. And 240 divided by 6 minus 1, or 240 divided by 5, is equal to 48. Now the difference has dropped to 8. As I increase my sample size, Notice that the difference between the n and n minus 1 calculation becomes less and less and less. And by the time I get to 20, a sample size of 20, it's dropped to 0.6. As you can see, this n minus 1 adjustment makes a big difference with small sample sizes, but as the sample size goes up, the impact is less. And in fact, by the time we get to 120, the difference is only 0 0.01. Let me graph this for you now. Along the horizontal axis is sample size, and along the vertical axis or the y-axis is difference. And what I've graphed is the differences for sample sizes from 4 to 20. At small sample sizes, there's a big difference. And at large sample sizes, 
is a very small difference. So this n minus 1 adjustment makes a big difference at small sample sizes and less of a difference as the sample size grows. The last thing I want to discuss is why we don't make the same adjustment for a population variance, but we make the adjustment for a sample variance. So let me draw the population bell curve with a population of mu, and I'll put in a sample the same size as the population. So the sample mean and the population mean are equal. Sample and population are the same, no error, no adjustment needed. Let me show that to you another way. Let me draw back in that bell curve, the population bell curve, and with a population mean of mu. The sample mean is x bar. We need to make an adjustment because the sample mean is not the same as the population mean. We have an error. So if the sample size grows and grows and grows, or I let it grow doing more sampling, the error gets smaller and smaller until eventually there's no error. The means are equal to each other. And again, no adjustment is necessary. There's no error and no adjustment needed. You'll see this degrees of freedom idea in a lot of different calculations and statistics. And in a subsequent video, I'm going to talk to you about the theory or the idea behind it to begin with. As always, share the knowledge, share the love on Facebook, Google Plus, and Twitter. Questions and comments below. Like us too. Please like the video. And subscribe. I'm always posting new things.